It's time for the final unit of the course. And um, we've, uh, I wouldn't say we've saved the best till last. We've saved perhaps the most difficult till last. And our theme now is consciousness. There is a great deal of confusion around this term. Um, I'd encourage you to look at the images on the slide. These are what you get if you do a Google search, image search for consciousness, and they show all kinds of wacky blue brains extending out to the cosmos. Mad stuff all together. Stuff that if it was an, an illuminated manuscript from the Middle Ages, you'd say how imaginative they were. Well, I guess consciousness seems to be a term that stimulates us in some respect. So I'm often asked about consciousness and the science of consciousness, if there is any. Um, before you could answer any such question, you'd have to be able to sort of answer this question. What, what, what are you talking about? It's not enough to say, I know what I'm talking about and you know what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to define it. And I doubt that you could describe consciousness succinctly, but maybe send it to me if you can. If we don't define it, then we start asking questions like this. How does the brain generate consciousness? Well, unless we've agreed what consciousness is, we don't know that that question makes any sense at all. Um, another way of asking questions in the area is how does consciousness arise in the brain? It's usually the brain that's invoked here. And um, unless we've agreed what we're talking about, again, this question doesn't make a lot of sense. So maybe a wiser course of action would be to hold off and ask, what does the word consciousness mean in the first place? Um, an awful lot of popular talk around consciousness makes it sound as if the brain was a very peculiar part of the body that secreted some substance you can't see, like consciousness, just as the liver secretes bile. I remind you, the brain is an organ of the body. Um, and that characterization of consciousness should give you pause for thought and make you go, hang on, hang on, hang on. What is it I'm trying to get at here? And note that simply substituting the word experience for consciousness changes nothing. When we meet, you can discuss your conscious thoughts, you can discuss your experience, and I can discuss mine. We will have some kind of a shared understanding because we're people from comparable backgrounds, maybe. Maybe, but maybe we don't have that much agreement. And just because we use words in everyday conversation, particularly in describing ourselves, doesn't mean that we have picked out something real that can be characterized using the methods of science. So the first thing to learn is that people tend to mean very different things when they talk about consciousness. And so what we're going to do in this last unit is not solve the problem of consciousness or whatever that it might mean. We're going to unpack that word and show a few different senses in which this word is used, some of which give rise to some kinds of science, some of which don't, um, none of which will answer all your questions that you have here, but you didn't expect too many answers here, I hope. So in what follows in the next few videos, two meanings of the word consciousness are going to be distinguished, access consciousness and phenomenal consciousness. Access consciousness is a term that is used when we're talking about the kind of things you can talk about, what you can report on. And you might distinguish this kind of access consciousness from the notion of unconscious, which is stuff that you, under other circumstances, might report on or speak about, but not under these. Phenomenal consciousness is very different. This is more like the notion of an ongoing locus of experience, which is associated with your person. Notice that this word does not bring any complement in the sense of an unconscious with it. So that'll be important as we go along. And we'll discover a few more senses of the term 
consciousness as well. And we'll tease apart and see what kind of science one can possibly do here.